Radio.tv, bringing you the news before it happens. Stream live into your home via the World Wide Internet. Welcome to Profit.tv, bringing you the latest news from the spiritual front. The following program is being streamed live from Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Join us now for Profit.tv. Program already in progress. Here's another thing. You notice when, when God gives you a word, you're going to do something, there's a lot of wind in your sails, and then you go tell two or three people, and they're like, yeah, and the wind is out of your sail. That wind was in your sail to motivate your ship to head on a course of faith, to put action to your faith. It is not time to share it. But since we're not taught these things in manifestation, um, people wonder why, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just, and I don't at all want to pick on um, any kinds of things, but I don't, I don't like playing church. There's realities of the way things work, and sometimes it's like you don't, you share on a need to know basis only, and you let that motivation stay in you because that's the wind that's going to carry you to the next shore. Um, Mary didn't share, and even, um, uh, what's his name, Zachariah. You know, uh, an angel shows up and says, yo, Zach, you're going to have a kid. Well, Zach goes, yeah, come on, better than doubting Thomas. Yeah, what sign am I going to have? Well, how about the fact that I'm an angel? <laughs> right? But that's, but that's not good enough, right? So um, uh, the angel, ba if you read between the lines and you understand more about God, the, the angel basically says this. He says, I don't have time to explain to you how to manifest a word from the Spirit into the natural. But because this is very important, this is going to be John, who the Spirit of Elijah is going to be on, who is going to fulfill the Seder and all the testimony of Elijah ushering in Messiah. And because that has to happen, because Messiah has to be ushered in according to prophecy so the whole world can get saved. I, that's a little too much to just focus on you and your humanity being able to do it. So in this case... The sign you're going to have is you're not going to be able to say anything about it. Negative, positive, nothing. And by the fact that you won't talk, I'm going to, it's going to actually create faith in you. Because something supernatural. How often do we have to hear, feel, oh, I feel the fire of God. I know you're going to get healed. How about when you pray for somebody, you feel no fire, no unction, nothing, and they get healed anyway. God taught me a long time ago the unction is to help our unbelief. It's just a catalyst to help us believe. So now what's happening is his muteness is a catalyst to put him in more faith. And then it puts everybody else in faith. What just happened? Oh, my God, I met with an angel. Oh, you know, he wrote it down. Uh, this angel told, you know, whatever. They're like, oh, my God, oh, he's kidding. He's faking. But you realize after the murmuring and talking, you know how that goes, the, the, it built faith. And it actually created a, a venue for that to come in. It's really interesting how that worked. Um, but you don't want to share stuff. You don't want your bubble to get burst. You don't want to share it. Let swine trample it. Boom, boom, boom. It's the same kind of an idea, okay? Now, um, when you're walking at a higher level of faith, watch how the enemy attacks you. What happens when you fall? You go to a lesser dominion, right? Um, if you fall enough, well, wouldn't you say a pit is a ditch or a lower dominion? If I'm walking along at this level and I fall, I fell into a ditch or I fell into a pit a lower revelation real simple the higher revelation was that this is possible and you're walking on water then peter fell in a ditch or a pit and said what the heck was i thinking i'm not god and the fear welled up or else the 11 ministers on the boat said peter you can't walk on water what do you think you are god and he goes oh okay whatever it was that was presented it popped him out of a revelation and, and faith is a place. He was, in, he was in an existence of walking on water. He entered into that room where that was possible. But then he couldn't hold that altitude of faith or revelation, and he sank into a pit or a lower revelation, okay? Um, do you realize, okay, going up Mount Zion, it's, Mount Zion is the same thing. Mount Zion is like... The kingdom of God is built line upon line, precept upon precept. It's kind of like the stair steps that the priests walk up. It's the same thing. And every revelation that we go on, and that's why if we got screwy revelation, we're, we'll be, we won't go up. We will always be learning but never coming into the truth. 
which answered what that girl was saying. Well, I heard we're not supposed to do vertical warfare. We're supposed to do horizontal because you get in trouble. Everything about God is vertical. It's coming out of the pit. It's coming up to a higher revelation. It is. Good. That's why they walked up the temple. That's why the mountain. It's. It's. And that's line upon line. Pre and if you're on faulty revelation, you're always learning, never coming to the truth, wandering around in the wilderness, never coming into the inheritance, never coming into the blessing. I got news for you. As you start wandering up, you are going to run into giants. So what? If God be with us, why are these stories in the Bible? If God be with us, we can take the land. The key is as we're led of God. And God is leading each one in a different different fashion. You'll notice I'm not telling everybody we're going to go take on. I can start identifying. So God's not, no, because God's, God's not leading that. God's building warriors right now. He's got to build up warriors uh, to where, A, if nothing else, I'm just simply revealing maybe a blueprint of what the process that we go through is and um, helping you hear from God so you can understand what battle you're doing today so that you're taught. My children are ta not taught by the latest book. Uh, I got a book I just finished, you know, great, but that's not the book to teach from, you know, this one is. Does that make sense? Um, and my children are taught by my spirit, and the key is learning how God teaches us so that we can overcome. And beyond that, I'm kind of a motivator, you know, to kind of motivate you to, to, to take the battle, uh, and sometimes a drill sergeant, right? Just, just kind of kick some butt, and if you get in over your head, you know, I got enough firepower from the battle I've taken that I can help clear you from demonic, which is a real good place to be in when you're trying to learn to fight. I'd rather have stronger fighters around me. I always align myself with stronger fighters. So, do you realize that as soon, you know, it talks about backsliding? So, backsliding would be kind of sliding down off the hill, wouldn't it? Well, backsliding could also be sinking through this level of transparent gold. Why do I say streets of gold, transparent gold? Because you have your faith tried in the fire, like gold. It's, it's just a puzzle. This is just a puzzle. It's not random ideas. It's a puzzle. It all comes together. That's why you're going through the faith battles. Why does God make me have to fight and believe for so long? Why didn't he just do it? I've been standing in faith. because How do you build your muscles? Resistance training. Well, until you come up against some hard challenges, you don't have faith to press through and make it happen. So you're having your faith muscle built. Well, those, these are those who um, uh, fail or fall away in the day of adversity. Well, God doesn't, he has no pleasure when we draw back. It's only possible that you, only by faith can you please God. So as soon as you sink to a lower thing, well, it's not going to happen. You are in sin. Isn't that what it says? That which is not faith is sin. As soon as you sink to lower habitation, you are in sin. Why? Because you're no longer part of the creative process of manifesting what God was trying to teach you how to manifest. Do you realize that every time, and I'm going to say this, every time you manifest a miracle, God gets glory. See, the miracles are available, but not without a vessel that will dare to believe. Jesus said, you make the word of God of no effect. Because you won't believe it. You won't put it to the test. I like taking the word of God and just sticking it right in the situation. And people are like, oh, that's prideful. Oh, that's arrogant. N no, I like proving the word works. I don't like coming up with a different doctrine. The word works. It's true. Now, if I'm not seeing it, then there's something God's doing to me. And if it's he's building my faith, then it's just a matter of resistance training. If it's a matter of who knows what it is. Trust me, if there's pride, whatever, God in the process is going to deal with these things. My job is to keep walking and keep trusting him. I can't figure it out in my head by trying to, okay, I'm going to act humble, I'm going to do this. Am I doing everything right? Am I doing everything? No. I have to have an existence and a, and an exp a life experience with him. And he meets me where I am in, in spite of all my frailties. If you have hidden, dark, dark secrets in your life, don't hide them from God. Take them to God and invite him into the middle of it. Because that, when you bring the light into the middle of it, the darkness loses its power. Does that make sense? And love will overcome a multitude of sin. I'm saying some people don't do that. If, if, if there's areas that you haven't overcome, if there's who knows what it is, you know, we all cop attitudes. We all do things. We all, uh, the key is God's looking for a teachable spirit. Then he can continue to teach us. But part of that teaching, God got me off my knees crying out, crying. He said, stand up. And he'd have me stand up. Even when I screwed up, stand up and look at me. Don't get on your knee. Get up. Stand up. But that wasn't what I was being taught by the religious. Well, that's because that's part of a procedure. 
That's part of a religious spirit. God told me to stand up. When I went to a Jewish synagogue, you know how long they have all, they have a whole season of things that they do throughout the year, and then it repeats each, you know, every festival, each thing. Do you realize only one or two of their things will the men actually ever go to their knees? And do you know, as soon as I've been, I was, I just was invited to one of these things, so I went, and God does these things to help us understand. As soon as I went, I, I, as soon as I got to my knees, they were back up already. I had just hit my knees. They were like, brum, brum. <laughs> Why? Because they're taught by the Spirit of God that they're royalty. It's really interesting. Now, it doesn't mean having a humble heart from God. Are you kidding? I know what a mess I am. <laughs> you know, you really want me to tell? <laughs> you follow? Do I really want to hear you? No. I want to see who you are in God. The humble part comes from your revelation of where you came from. That you can't take any glory where you are. The falling in love part is that he lets you walk in the new thing that he made. Because he made you cool. He made you neat. And you get to enjoy it. You know? And, and people actually respect you. And you're like, man, but, but God, I know what I am. Right? It's, it's, it's all him. But listen, enjoy the new creature, creature. God wants you to be in that new creature. He wants you to enjoy that place. I mean, that's, that's part of his, his provision. But anyway, streets of transparent gold. Do you like that? Isn't that interesting? And you get presented with an idea. Why? It challenges your faith. Why? Okay. When the walls were down around Jerusalem in the book of Nehemiah, they were a reproach before God. Why? What were walls for? They kept invaders out. They shielded from invaders. But when the walls were broke down, every jekyll, every raw, every thief, every stupid idea, every thought, everything could run through. There was no ability to maintain an attitude of faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. See, in the natural soulish realm, or in a soulish teaching, it doesn't make sense. I don't know what you'd come up with, because here's what your soul would say. God... I thought you were a God of love. These people just came in. Jerusalem got wiped out. The walls got knocked down. Have a heart. Are you an ogre? I'm trying to help them build the walls. I'm trying to help them. Why don't you help? See? Because they were approached before God while their walls were down. Why? Because they couldn't stand in faith without a revelation. The walls around Jerusalem, we've done this before, are our shield of faith are those that are sealed in their forehead. The walls around Jerusalem, it's all the same thing. This Bible is talking about you. You are Jerusalem. You are Jerusalem. You are Jerusalem. Okay? This is an inward thing. The kingdom of God is found within. You don't find it outwardly. These stories, outwardly, but they're to show us inside. All right? Our shield of faith is our level of revelation. And when you have bricks in the wall... You want tested revelation. That's why every time you come up against a challenge and you put the Word of God to the test, and I don't mean sitting on your butt hoping it works. I mean demanding it works. You're not taking nothing from the devil because I walk in the reality. Jesus showed me the real world like the Matrix, and I'm pressing through and not buying the lie. Okay, And every time you press through and do that on the Word, and Jesus said these are those, when tribulation or persecution comes because they're trying to manifest a miracle, they fall away, or it's sown on sony ground, they got other things more important than getting this in their life. Does that make sense? Or the deceitfulness, the luscious, and the cares for other things enter in, they produce it. But these are those that press through those levels. They start manifesting 160 and 30-fold. Um, when the When the... Okay, at a, in a season when we were in, uh, doing the healing and deliverance ministry in Westwood, and that was a really powerful team, and I watched how God brought that team together, and I watched the unity that came in, and, and I watched how the anointing increased. We had people coming from, you know, two hours away from all directions, San Diego, everywhere, and that was before they had cleansing stream at Church on the Way. And, I mean, it, the celebrities, it was the most anointed ministry, healing and deliverance that was happening. That's really interesting because in one season, <clears throat> as we're girded up, and, and I remember when I was early at this stuff trying to cast a particular demon out, God wouldn't let me do it. He said, you're not ready. I said, God, come on. He said, you're not ready. I said, God. He said, you're not ready. I said, okay, fine. Then that week, he took me through my lesson because he was teaching me, and insecurity manifested. Well, I didn't know that was in my soul. God did. And he said, see, now if I would have let you take that spirit out, it would have hit you in this vulnerability, and it would have devastated you. 
and uh, it could have set back your growth six months. In fact, it could have put such fear in you, you would have just backed away altogether. So God knows what he's doing. Uh, you can't enter into any warfares without him. It's not entered in because you read Pigs in the Poke or what's it called, Pigs in the Parlor? That, that gives us understanding, especially when people aren't seeing it on your own. But if you will get around the Holy Spirit and Holy Spirit filled ministries, you will start to see the stuff. And then it's neat to talk to people what the experience is like. And that's kind of Jesus style. The books are all great and good, but too many people read books and then do a formula and they don't have relation. I want him to teach me because when, it get, when the brass tacks get down to the demon and me, it's the demon, me, and him. And it's his power, and it is his anointing. And I'm not counting on any book or any book training. I'm counting on what he has taught me. And if he hasn't taught me, I don't want to be doing that. Does that make sense? But the key is, I don't want to sit on my butt being a scaredy cat little full of fear. Christians that are full of fear are full of demons. According to the word of God. That's how the devil controls you. Fear is a spirit, and it's not from God. And yet, you've got leaders that are full of fear. And I can't believe how they can say I'm a word church when they haven't even identified that, and a Christian can't have a demon when they've got fear in them. Fear is a spirit, not from God. And it's how I had somebody the other day say, oh, well, I got a check in my spirit. I said, that wasn't checked. That was fear. And they, they didn't know the difference because they hadn't been taught that there's a difference between a check in your spirit and fear motivating you. Okay? And that wasn't a check. And I had to say, I said, that's, no, that's fear. And that's how the devil controls you. You got to get over it. Don't give in to that fear. I said, that's just the devil. That, 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 yeah, you had a check. <laughs> you had the devil trying to control you. I mean, when's the last time somebody explained the difference? You, you, gotta, uh, you got, when you're feeling, you've got to discern, what am I feeling? Do you guys ever spend time with your feelings and just try to understand what you're feeling instead of, uh, uh, <laughs> I got gas, you know, give me, give me a bromo or whatever they call it. I don't think that's, I don't know. But do you know what I'm saying? These emotions and feelings hit us for a reason. Sometimes when there's a financial battle, you'll feel it hit the solar plexus, right? Sexual battles will usually hit in the groin. Uh, spirit of psychology will hit up like around the mind. You know what I'm saying? There's different witchcraft uh, can be nausea and, and sickness. Does that make almost like the flu? Dizziness. That's a lot of times the spirit of witchcraft hitting you. And I don't doubt that witchcraft and the flu are kind of worked together or created by the same. Does that make sense? I don't doubt it because it's the exact same symptoms. I mean, it's just, it's just, too, it's just too weird. It's almost like when, when that spirit comes on you, then you're sick. And the difference is when your, your shield is able to keep the spirit off you. As the spirit approaches you, you will feel its thought. The closer a spirit gets to you, the closer you feel its thoughts and, and its feelings. Okay, So I can be standing in a room and all of a sudden somebody can get next to me and I can tell there's a spirit of infirmity on them because I can feel that spirit. Do you realize it's easier when, when you prayed for somebody to be sick um, to be aware when the spirit is outside, but if you don't cleanse yourself from that spirit and it hovers around you for a while and it finds a weakness, which would be fear. Fear is darkness and the demons can grab onto darkness. If that would go into fear, the demon would grab that. Once that thing plants into your dirt like a seed, and then your body, now it's a lot harder to battle the thing off than it is to identify the spirit before it comes on you. Spirit of infirmity is a spirit of infirmity. Your spirit and the Holy Spirit praying in tongues should be the strongest spirit in your dirt. Your dirt is your body, your land. You should really see yourself like that farmer with the shotgun. Get off my land! <laughs> right? Because God put your spirit to rule and reign. Your first place of ruling and reigning is in this temple. And then it expands into your family, your business, your city, blah, 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 blah. All right. Um, so God takes us through a process. And I know I'm kind of bouncing around, but what's new, right? <laughs> All right. Um, back to the deliverance thing. So this woman comes in, and the spirit that's on this woman is very heavy witchcraft spirit. And she'd been coming several times. And again, you're learning. And, and this one particular meeting, and this had been going on, she's in the back room. Because a lot of times we would take the heavier ones into the back room to deal with because it'll distract the meeting a lot. And once the staff and the team is growing up strong enough to where people are able to deal with the things, okay. In the back room, this, this is probably one of the, at that time, one of the nastier ones that I messed with. Now, I didn't happen to be in the back room. Another girl who was very anointed was back there. And a girl that had no business being back there was back there. Uh, because she had favor 
what the person who's meeting it was, but he, because there was an emotional, was a little blinded, was she anointed to be back there yet, and she wasn't. I stuck my nose in to look, and this thing, because the demon in this one, I'd, I've seen it, a, I'd seen it a couple times when I would pray, and, and it would, I would just go right into the bowels of hell, and I would see, and I don't know how to explain this, how a body, and how in the spirit realm, the dimensions, when you go into, when you, when you go into the spirit, you're not only that thick, when you go in, you're, in, you're going into the spirit. You, you go into a deeper dimension. I don't know how to explain it. It's not just the thickness of a, of a physical body. And you can see ties to different things. Um, when she, um, Father, in the name of Jesus, I, and this is, I break every spirit over this place right now. And that little demon that's been messing around in here, I break your power and authority. I command you out of here now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for that. In Jesus name um, when I walked in I looked and this demon is is manifest and looking right at her and it's going I'm gonna kill you and the fear she, she totally just filled I mean not a little fear she her she had no walls up she had no level of shielding she had no experience she'd never cast anything out she was cute <laughs> but that that's okay it just what it was fine for other things you know but not for that level of a thing a fear hit her and devastated her and I walked in right away and I said hey you deal with me and the demon you know won't even look at you right because the demon knows and you, you deal with me no no uh, same thing with the other girl all right a week later because that was a heavy one the three of us were set up in a car wreck okay what was that that was another graduation point of the three of us I'm the only one that is in ministry today I'm the only one that plowed into this heavy territory does that I, I mean I could go on and on and it's not poo-pooing that was graduation. Why? Because I just look at each throne like another dominion. That one's mine too. Nope, God's with me. Sorry, that's not going to work. Okay? Now, um, now watch the, the way I grabbed the word and the way I applied it. And, and you know what? I don't even believe it was me because if I said it's me, hey, I really believe God gave me the will, desire, strength. Um, we always have a choice to want our, not want to lose our life. We want to hold on to our soulish life. No, 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 and don't want to answer the call. We always have that choice. So maybe in the free will of things, I can say that my choice was to go all the way. But then he strengthens you, motivates you. Does that make sense? Um, that's really about it. You just make the choice and he'll, he does the rest. But uh, there's active. Okay. Um, let, me, let me go through the line of accidents. The first girl... Uh, gets in a car wreck, the car gets just smashed, she's in a neck brace, she's messed up. Okay, that's it. The second girl, who, by the way, was, would poo-poo me because of how staunch I was in my stand sometimes with what I would and wouldn't do. Uh, for example, like when I wouldn't take medical, and I'm not telling you to do this, but I wouldn't take medical. And, the, and okay. Um, in other words, she thought I was a bit of a fanatic. But I've seen miracles that they haven't seen. Um, she got in a wreck. Her revelation was the car insurance to buy her a new car and she would or, or, and pay it off and then buy a new car on payments and go through therapy. So she was, you know, in her cast and stuff for a while. My situation, I'm driving all day long. I know I'm being set up. I know I'm marked. We talked about that a little bit. It's important to know when you're marked. It's important to know when the devil has an assignment. Now, keep in mind, we were casting a major demon out of somebody. And uh, because of the lessons that I've gone through, that's how I could deal with Leviathan when it blew up the main power supply here. And even when it tried to retaliate on me three months, it didn't matter. I had to walk through the season. But I knew it couldn't kill me. I knew it couldn't take me down. Even when it turned me in and ministries and people, it didn't matter. because I knew. And then I watched the blessings you guys have no idea the blessings and, and where God takes you. I mean, my show's on national TV right now. I mean, I didn't do that. Does that make sense? But, but if you can't overcome something, you kind of don't belong at the next level because you don't have an overcoming testimony to raise up other overcomers. So if you want to be a king, you have to earn your kingship. You kind of have to take the throne. All right? Um, and, and you at least have to have a mentor or 
somebody that you listen to that will motivate you to take the next level. Your call is only limited by you. Okay? I'm just a coach and and I'm just sharing, but I'm on doing my own, you know? I'm just on doing my own and everybody should be like motivated doing that. Anyway, I can feel I'm marked, I can feel I'm marked all day long. All right. That's the time that you really want to stay under the shelter of the wing of the, and stay, just kind of maybe not go out in the car today, maybe, maybe stay in that place. And that's when, you're, when there's a heavy, if you can tell the difference. And that's not the same as having a fearful spirit and being lazy and just staying in the house and not going to work. You know what I'm saying? It's a different thing. And you're not marked for six years. I suppose you could have a generational spirit of calamity or something on you, and yeah, that would need to get dealt with. But that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm, that, that's just something that's generational that always is happening in your family. Um, when the, your a enemy actually decides to target you because you've gone in and kicked his butt a little bit, and he's looking and he's realizing you're not yet a king. Back to this, you're a prince. I wasn't a king in that battle, I was a prince, but I was being used. Now I'm starting to move into the covering of that meeting. And I was starting to be used in heaven. Why? Because I kept saying, and I wasn't waiting for the leader. I kept saying, God, you're raising me up. You teach me to be a covering. And I was supporting the leader and I was standing there and I knew he was the one in charge, but I was going after God for the anointing. And I was being faithful to be part of a team where God could use us as a team to liberate a lot of captives. All right. I think, okay, whoa, I can feel I'm marked. As I was driving, one car, whoa, Tris tries to come into me. I'm on the freeway, obviously. One car, whoa, and he goes by. Just then, another Christian, I mean, I know he's a Christian because I saw the fish, and him and I are just like this, and I was thinking, isn't it amazing? The people that have the Spirit of God upon them flow, but the people that have the devil are blinded, just like this accident, are blinded, and they're caused to do things to cause wrecks or to get in your way to make you late or to, you know and it's just the way the enemy blinds stuff and it's really interesting when you get into that level of spiritual conflict is this interesting to anybody yeah okay i'm not boring anybody all right yeah yeah go to don paul's meetings they're never boring <laughs> all right um all right so all of a sudden, the car in front of me just like slams his brakes on, and I'm just like, I'm having enough of this, you know, and I like try to change lanes. I'm going to get over away because I'm just watching the enemy trying to manifest through whatever he can to take me out. Next thing I know, I move over, move over lane, move over. Next car slams his brakes on. Bam, I stop. Semi truck coming right up behind me. Yeah, bam, and hits me. Little teeny Toyota pickup. <laughs> Little tin can, okay. Anyway, whoa, and you know, the seat doesn't have hardly anything. It's metal. You just hit the back of the wall, your, your window, you know, little toy, the old kind of little Toyota pickups. And uh, uh, I'm like, Jesus. <laughs> and I can't breathe, and the wind's knocked out of me. I can't open the doors because they're crunched in. Jesus, I ended up crawling out the window, come out of the car. Of course, the guy, oh, well, man, anyway. Because the spirit, and then all the, the, the assignment lifts because the demonic was putting pressure on anybody it could that it had. Jesus said, The devil has nothing in me. People that have the devil has access to, that's how he can get them to do things. He's got access to them. That's why we want to go through our own cleansing and deliverance and get, get the loins of our mind girded up with the revelation of truth. Um, and it's not a quick process, it takes a season. Um, of course, the guy doesn't have insurance. Okay, well, here's my stance. I didn't know what to do. I call up. Do um, you guys want to hear this? Oh, yeah. Okay. I call up and <laughs> I call up and a friend of mine goes, well, here, this is, call this attorney, boom, boom, boom. Well, the attorney, you know, takes you through the whole thing and they want to run you through the medical thing because they want to put you in the whiplash, put you in the, and get all the, get all the, get all the, get all they can. And, and I'm having a problem here because I'm, I'm, I, I know the devil set me up in a wreck and my back's messed up and my car is now totaled and it's not paid off, and now I have nowhere to get to work, and this guy doesn't have insurance, and I'm like, all right, um, but I know where I'm walking, and I don't live in the natural world. Well, I knew that they could not take Jesus' life. You guys have that revelation, right? Remember when they said, Who, where's Jesus? I am he, and the power knocked him down. He could have done that all day long. I mean, there, he had to stop playing with his power and let them take him. All right. Every revelation you can get that Jesus walked in, you can walk in. Unless you listen to a religious spirit who will tell you you're a little sheep. And how dare you? But that's the spirit of religion. Because that's not what the Bible says. Okay? 
Um, and I think when people stress we're a word-based church, I think it's really because they're not. And so hopefully that convinced, or when somebody says, I am the Bible answer man. Really? Well, who voted you? I didn't. And I don't think you have the answers. But that convinces people that don't know God that you are. So, anyway. Um, okay. I'm hearing this on the phone, and I thought, no. I said, no, devil, I don't give you my back. You took it illegally. You had no legal right to cross the line and attack me. Now, this is something really interesting about spiritual warfare. These are revelations you have to get. The devil has no right to attack you. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. He can't cross the bloodline, right? You've heard it all. But you know what I found out in some of the heavier warfares? And you guys do not have to partake of this revelation. If you have a better revelation, let it be according to as you believe. Because it's your revelation that creates what you walk in. Okay? I know some people that said, no, the devil cannot touch my kids, period. I don't care what anybody says. He cannot touch my kids. Bang. And that's the thing they got with God. And guess what? The devil can't touch the kids. Um, sometimes in deliverance ministries from all the warfare, you'll find people will get worn down. Maybe I was in a worn down place or not. But what I walked out of these experiences in a lot of years of this with is I realized that the devil is an outlaw. And sometimes he will step across the line and steal from you. And if you allow him to, he, ke he will keep stealing from you because he's an outlaw. He doesn't care. He knows he's not supposed to do these things. But then again, he's not supposed to do anything. He knows that he doesn't have anything to lose. Okay. Um, what I found with the devil is when, when he does step across the line, if you do not demand and it's illegal, then he must pay. If the thief be found, he must pay sevenfold. One time God told me a hundredfold. I said, God, that's not scriptural. God went, <clears throat> I'm God. <laughs> I said, okay. But then later, huh? Right, right. But then later God showed me people that manifesting miracles. 30, 60, and 100 fold. And so part of it is your revelation and your ability to manifest 100 fold of the tribulation that, that I, I can see I've kind of branched off into three stories right now. We're going to try and come back to all of them. Um, um, and so hopefully it'll start to make sense. Um, when uh, I had the revelation, Jesus had to lay his life down. And I said, devil, I don't give you my back. You crossed the line illegal. You are a thief. I am not giving you my back. You do not have legal right to it. You cannot take it. Because I, I, I'm already pl I living in the supernatural. The, the, the level of deliverances and miracles. And the, no, no, no. I crossed out of that other realm a long time ago. And I'm living, you cannot take my back. And um, so it was interesting. So I said, let, let me tell you what you're going to do, devil. You're going to pay off my car. You're going to buy me a new car cash, and you're giving me my back back. Okay? And so I went to the attorney, and, da -da -da, and, the, and the, the court case, I let the, however they worked it out, pay off my payments on the truck, but now the truck's paid off, I have no car. Um, and um, I went to the doctor, and I did not want to go through all the physical therapy. The only thing I'd let him do is give me a massage, because that's something I would do anyway, right? Well, it's interesting, because I, as I went to tell him, she said, well, you know, I said, no, no, I, I'm fine. Jesus is going to heal my back. She thought, I appreciate your faith. I'm, I'm, I'm Jewish myself, and, and I appreciate your faith. Um, but a lot of times what we find with these things is three weeks, three months later, they come back uh, a lot worse. As soon as she said that, pain started coming into my back. I went, woo. Now, I didn't tell her she was the devil because she wasn't. But I recognized that it wasn't the Spirit of God talking through her. I was walking an altitude of faith, and the, the white doctor outfit, the stethoscope, and the next series of things she says are designed to tag my intellect to make it reasonable why what I'm believing is not going to work. But I knew all these things. I knew the streets of transparent gold were here. I, and because I knew it, I also knew how to defend the altitude I was at. Does that make sense? And so I immediately, I thought, that's the devil. Well, I know how to deal with the devil. She doesn't know that's where it was motivated. I said, well, I don't think you understood me. Um, I said, I, I appreciate, you know, who you are as a doctor. I don't think I understood, but um, l let me uh, just explain to you, uh, Jesus is going to heal me. Well, the reason I said it like that is because I learned years ago, um, if you're ever battling with demons, 
If you ever walk in a room and there's lots of spirits, Jesus, Jesus. And you'll, and you'll literally, if you can see in the spirit realm, that name, literally, they go like that. And his name literally does this to him. The wicked melt in his presence, the Bible tells us. But literally, Jesus. And when you're saying his name, when you're speaking, I don't use that name in vain. And I use that name and there's power. So I knew I was, you know, and whenever I was dealing with that, you want to know what spirit is in a room? Walk into any room anywhere and go, Jesus is Lord. Usually you'll walk in and you'll go, gee, oh, I don't want to say that very loud. The reason is there's another spirit ruling and you're intimidated. These are all just fun little tools and things to help read the spirit realm and help you understand what's going on. All right, is this fun? Yes. All right. Practical tools. All right. Um, she goes, <laughs> well, um, I, I, that's, I really appreciate your faith, but uh, after, uh, you know, I'm a PhD, I've done it, and she starts giving me her credentials, and I'm just like, and, and I'm not trying to tell you guys to go off and do this. I was in a place in the spirit where I knew what I was, I knew who I was fighting, and it wasn't the woman. Um, but I, it doesn't matter who. He'll manifest through a book. He'll manifest through the TV, a radio, a telephone call. Does that make sense? Um, and And... It's fascinating when you, when you really realize from the spirit realm how many ways you can access. It's really kind of like the Matrix, how this thing can tag in here, it can tag in here, it can use this. It really, that movie is real that way. And because we're thinking, it's like, how did, you get, how did you get over there? It's not that way. You're in a dimension that you have access to this limited dimension really easily in a number of ways. Anyway, uh, the last time she said, I go, well, um, after the PhD and everything, I said, I said no, I, maybe you didn't understand me. Jesus is going to heal me. And I just define, and then, and at that point she went like this. I mean, she literally, she literally manifest and backed off. I ended up going in and witnessing to the guy in there about my faith and said, God's going to heal me. Watch, God's going to heal me. I never once doubted it in my own mind, and I never once said, well, I hope God heals me. I said, God's going to heal me. God's going to heal me. Watch, God's going to heal me. I knew what I was fighting. I knew who I walked with. I knew my relationship. I'd been through enough stinking demon battles. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't like I was hopeful. I knew. I knew that what I was in. This thing had stole illegally. I'm commanding the thief. Why? God had already taken me through and taught me to don't let the... If he gets illegal with you and rips you off, don't put up with no. You command everything and he's taken plus interest. Cough up the interest. What you will find is if you will command the devil to, to return sevenfold, which is scriptural, if God tells you a hundred, which is also scriptural, if you have that revelation or if God tells you... Um, the devil might try it once or twice more, but he pretty much stops, and I'll tell you why. Once you have discovered that every time he takes, you know, $100 from you, and you find out he's going to have to give you a million dollars back, shortly he would be out of money if he kept doing it. And he has to cough it up because you're taking it to God as a son of righteousness. He has no righteousness. The thief is only trying to intimidate the younger believer. That series of three car wrecks was the graduate was intimidation. That thing came in and he said, I'm going to risk it. These guys, the, this, this crew is coming up too strong. I've got to shut this down. I'm going to come in and I'm going to slam it hard. And he came in and swatted three people. Well, one had no business being there. Well, she knew we're near the ministry. The next one, you understand what I'm saying? But I knew that that was a spirit of intimidation. And I knew I wasn't God. And I knew I was called a king. I knew I was called, I was destined for the throne. I knew I was destined to rule and reign. Does that make sense? And lead many, not into religion, not into games, but into manifesting the power of God and destroying the works of the devil and that's what this thing is about um, they were given into religion more more of a spirit of religion more respect of persons more in the soulish realm they didn't, they didn't want to fight through. They didn't want to lose their life. Remember I told you I, I have kind of an advantage. I, I just, I don't care. We're supposed to lose our life. What's that mean? Uh, everything that you think you have to have and do and be. Once you're free and you've lost your life, it's real hard for the devil to attack you because there's nothing that matters. And then at that point, God can give you all kinds of things. 
and you can occupy and rule and you do the greater things than you ever thought you would do. But when you care so much, when your soul is so tagged in, all right? Now, I'm not picking on women at all, but it seems a lot of times, um, and maybe it's just the way that, it's because women are naturally more emotional, family, soulish oriented, and the other two happen to be women. It just seems that women are more focused on the, their creator, their communicators. They're more focused on their interpersonal relationships between everybody, family, you know, telling husband what to do, take out the garbage, or, you know, just, you know what I'm saying? They're just always communicating. They always, and sometimes to lose that life, I mean, does that make sense? What life are we losing? It's not to become religious. I hope I don't appear religious. To you guys. I, I hope I don't. I'm try, I don't. We're not supposed to be religious, but you lose your life. You you um um the degree that you're still in the world and have your soulish life is the degree that the devil can attack you. The degree that you're dead to that life and walking in the spirit is the level of protection you're under. And I saw that during some earthquakes when, um, when the Northridge earthquake happened. And I actually watched the people that had the greatest fear in them. I don't care if you're Christian or not. The greatest fear in them uh, or the most worldliness got hit the most. Uh, I, nothing happened to me. I mean, just a little shake here and there, boom, boom, nothing. But people were devastated. And I started taking surveys. And I started talking to people. And I remember some of the teachers at the big church that I was going to, they were showing up teaching Sunday school with hard hats on. They were so full of fear. And I even pointed out, after they were prophesying and as they were talking, the kids were getting filled with fear. And I stood up and said, God's not giving us a spirit of fear. I started, I dealt with it. Oh man, did I get reprimanded? But, and it amazed me that the leadership couldn't recognize that there was fear motivated. They were more concerned with submission to authority and control than the right spirit being imparted. But that was, it was a whole fear-motivated thing. And you won't see that that level pray for miracles because the fear is controlling them. They can't command the devil to come out. They, they don't have authority over him. They don't have authority over their own temple. Um, but they can sure preach religion. So, you know, there's a difference between entering in. Jesus said, for those that have eyes to see and ears to hear, there and then Paul said, there remains an entering in. You got the doctrine, you got the church position, you got the pulpit, there, but there still remains an entering in. You haven't crossed in to this supernatural dimension yet. Um, and Paul said, we enter in through great tribulation. So the tribulation we're going through was that manifestation of that wreck. That was a tribulation. Well, some other people fell to pieces. When they heard what I was standing on, they just didn't want me even around their Bible class because they're reasonable Christians. Do you hear kind of what I'm saying? But yet, watch the miracles that happen. So um, anyway, now, that level of intimidation continued. I would not take money for my back. Why would I not take money for my back? Because if my back is healed then how can I take money for a sick back without lying to the insurance company? Was the pain in my back? Yes, the pain was there. I very well could turn around and justify that. I'm a prophet. I don't live in the now. And I shouldn't say that because that kind of messes it up because you do find God in the now. But I live... I'm hearing I live in the expression. I don't know what that means, so I don't want to say it. Maybe when I hear the tape later, I'll think, oh, now I get it, But because I try and go with what I'm hearing. Um, I live in the reality of that my back was healed, not the reality that the devil was putting on my back, which people could say was the natural reality. But I don't live there. I live in the real reality, which was, I don't give you my back. I don't give you my back. And... Um, so I couldn't take insurance money without feeling like I was deceiving the insurance company. Um, cut, let's just cut to the court chase real quick. I'm in a car with a young pastor, um, and uh, I'm believing for my healing. God's going to heal my back. Well, wait a second. There's sin in your life. You didn't tithe to me, or you didn't, you, you know, whatever it was. And I looked, and I thought, <laughs> I thought, you know, so-and-so, I can say his name, I go, what? what? I go, don't lay condemnation on me. And I walked away and I said, man, isn't this amazing? The devil can use anybody. He can use anybody. And I thought, isn't that funny? Because it was between the Spirit of God, me, and the liar. I don't care what he intimidates people. And that doesn't mean he was the devil either. Um, 
And it was in his meeting, which was a little home Bible study, and as we were worshiping and praising, all of a sudden, God's touching somebody's back. I did not feel the heat. power of God, did not feel the heat, did not feel the anointing, did not get a tap on the shoulder, this one's for you, did not have a bearing of witness in my heart or anything. But I was sitting there, and keep in mind, I was like this, right? Okay? You know, I've been in my back's all messed up. Uh, he said, God's healing somebody's back. I just went, I just, just moved my neck. I just stepped out and bang. <coughs> Maybe two or three times since, since that time, the devil tried to lay something on me, and I would just like, I stopped. I, excuse me, I, excuse me, hold on. Get off. And I just dealt with it. I stopped my social. I didn't walk around, okay, I'm in a, no, I went to the bath. I, I excused myself. I didn't even let that thing get on me 10 seconds. And I said, what do you think you're doing? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Goodbye. Nice try. Sorry, you lost already. Does that make sense? Um, it was fun. Several months later, I was putting 20,000 cash down on a new car. And that was fun. The other girl's still making her car payments. Does that make sense? All right. So Jesus said... So or so is the word, and these are those who go through. And it talks about the levels of tribulation, and, and they, they, you know, are offended and they fall away. But those that press through get a hundredfold, sixty and thirty. Uh, you know, I think I got in the upper end of that, but I had to press through that tribulation. All right, interesting, huh? All right. So when you take those thrones of dominion. The miracles manifest. That's the process of becoming a king. All right. Moreover, take thou up a lamentation. We're back to Ezekiel 19. Take thou up a lamentation for the princes of Israel. Those are the ones that are destined to become a king. These are my training to become a king. Because we're not trying to run a religious order here and see who can have the biggest church and how much money I can make in the church ministry. Does that make sense? That's not the thing at all. What we're trying to do is we are trying to become a king that we can rule and reign in the spirit realm and destroy all the works of the devil and raise up warriors to become not sheep but sons of God. Everybody in church is not a son of God. Sons of God move, God says, in the same power that my son moved in. Or sons. Paul was a son. Jesus was a son. They move in supernatural power and authority. Smith Wigglesworth was a son. The fact that these men have found these places shows us it exists. Why the heck am I settling for less than what's available? Well, I don't want to fight. And part of it is we don't have a mentor or a coach that even challenges us to go deeper or we're just told out of the chute there's no miracles don't even try and we're put to sleep what is happening that is when it says this part and the nations also heard of him and he was taken into their revelation their pit a lower revelation a lesser place of revelation than what you're being trained to walk in is exactly what a religious spirit does. All right? Um, who is thy mother? She's a lioness. Okay. And she brought up her one of her young whelps, and it became a young whelp, and it learned to catch the prey. It devoured men. Isn't that interesting? Remember? Jesus said, you can come against the Son of Man. You can come, you can come against me in the flesh. In other words, I'm, I am Son of Man. I am Son of God. There's two different natures. Okay? He's not coming against the spirit of God in men, he's coming against the nature of man, or was exposing that which was of the nature of man, not of the Spirit of God. And yet so often, in our, our religious trainings, it's all taught by the nature of man, and the soulish issues. Does that make sense? Okay. The nations also heard of him, and he was taken into their pit, their lower revelation. Remember the streets of gold sinking, you're down, now it doesn't manifest. And then these people at this revelation, how come I'm not being blessed? It's not fair, you should get blessed. Why am I not getting blessed? Well, why don't you listen to the revelations? Why don't you press through the level of tribulation? Why don't you get authority at this level and dare to believe God and see what he'll do in your life? Right? Okay. Um, or, or they try and figure out, well, now I know how you did it. You manip No, it's God, you know. And they uh, taken into their pit, and they brought him with chains unto the land of Egypt. Remember when the Bible talks about Egypt? Don't put your faith in Egypt. What is Egypt? Egypt is the matrix. It is just the natural life. 
It is the natural way of doing things. Now, does that say that we don't learn how to establish credit? For years, you know, I was told, buy everything cash. Well, I did. Now I'm realizing if I had a little bit of credit established, it would help me a little bit. So now, but the problem there is, <laughs> am I going to lean on the Spirit of God to supply my needs, or am I going to lean on that credit card and run up big credit debt? That's the problem. When you, when, when, when you are in need of something, the kingdom of God is obligated to fulfill that need. The demonic will come in like beavers to block the dam. As you continue to stand, having done all, stand therefore, stand and prophesy, you will break the dam through. Pressure, significant pressure from the kingdom will build up and the dam will eventually burst. And you will come into a revelation that all things are possible, but the devil can't let you find that, so he wants your faith to become shipwrecked. That's why he's blocking the dam. That's why it's not simple. He is fighting all these things so that you don't actually access and pull into your life the things you need. Okay, um, when you put that onto a credit card, the pressure is off the kingdom because your need has been met now. Unfortunately, now you're into bondage on the credit card. Now, that's not to say that businesses, which is totally different than businesses, when God has said, "I'm going to put you through school and we're going to do it on credit," or uh, we're gonna, "I'm going to have you take out an advertisement." in the LA Times to advertise your business that you've now established because a lot of times you take out business loans there's nothing wrong with that I'm talking about the person that sits there week after week will not work will not focus keeps running up the card oh well God's meeting my need oh well we're having a rapture party I've heard churches actually run up their credit cards because they're on rapture parties because they're all planning to get out of here in the next couple months isn't that wild Okay, that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about making investments and, and, and things. So it is good to learn business. It is good to understand those things. But we still, we do the things right, but our faith is really in God. Do you realize that most businessmen are trusting God? Because who said, because you put a sign up and because you learned to cut hair and because you put something out, anybody's going to walk through the door and do that. Everything you're doing is in faith. But faith without works is dead. You have now put works your faith. Most business people are exercising most more faith than the church. Do you realize how many people that know that the media affects the world will take a lease out, take out, um, take, you know, uh, take a lease out to buy TV editing equipment, cameras. They will, they will go and, and, you know, run up on a credit, somehow get, get lessons to learn how to edit. They will take out an ad, and they, in faith, they're doing everything in faith. They don't know how they're going to pay it, but they just believe it's going to happen. And then they get clients, they come and they're producing TV. Do you realize for years when I went around to set up Christians, and they'll tell you that we got to get on the airwaves, we'll tell you, but they wouldn't step out in faith. Well, God's going to bring all the money in. Five years later, God never brought all the money in and they're still not on TV. But the people in the world who were stepping out in faith, calling those things that weren't as though they were, put in action to their faith, have produced five years worth of programs and been more effective touching the world than the ones in the church. How can I then go up to them and say, I've got something to teach you because the Bible... Well, we're a word-based church, and we need them damn sinners saved. The Bible says when somebody is doing something righteous, even if they don't know the Bible, it is still righteousness when they're doing it right. All I can do to them is compliment them for their level of faith and say, you should teach some of the Christians I know. I'm doing that to motivate people because we don't want to be part of that sluggard little group that's not... Does that make sense? Um... Egypt is the natural realm. It's saying not to put your faith in Egypt. You, that doesn't mean you don't take the ad out or educate yourself or show up to work or plow and do the things. But you're, you're not running around thinking Egypt is going to supply it. You're not running around bugging everybody. You got to, you got to, you know, you're, 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 God's going to bring it in. God's going to make it happen. All right. Now, when she saw that she had waited, remember this one, he got captured in chains and brought into Egypt. You know, stop believing for that miracle. Stop it. Take the insurance money, you know, go through therapy and know that your back's going to be screwed up for the rest. You know what I'm saying? All right. Um, now, when she saw that her, she had waited and her hope was lost, then she took another one of her young whelps and made him a young lion. How many times have we heard that Catherine Coleman 
was the third person or fourth person because the first two men would not answer the call. You guys have all heard that. So the Holy Spirit starts out with somebody going through their tribulations and lessons. What happened to the one girl? She got in a wreck. She's not in ministry anymore. And yet she used to lead the worship. Does that make sense? She, she just backed off from that level. Why? Just, just couldn't handle this too much tribute. To, to, you know, uh, I didn't sign up for this. All right. So the Holy Spirit moves on to the next person. Okay. And Ray's, makes him a young lion. And he went up and down among the young lions. Do you remember when you guys were baby Christians and we would have, oh man, every night of the week there was a meeting. There was a meeting at the church on Sundays and Wednesdays. Then there was a Bible study at your house and one at your house and one at your house. And this local prophet was in town, so we ran there. And this prophet was there and we ran there. And I used to read the scriptures that said, and in the later days they'll come say, there's the Christ, there's the Christ, but don't go running. Oh, the anointing is here. Oh, the anointing is here. And we, but you remember how we run around and basically with our brethren that we're always hanging out with, which is all normal. It's part of when you went through college, you had your, your high school, you had your high school reunion, you have your high school chums. Well, it's the same thing and you're in that beginning school in Jesus and you're going to you know you got all your friends all the things that happen there before you actually get out into your destiny uh, in the king mode but this young one is walking up and down the young lions and he's praying and the miracles are happening and everybody's like oh he's got the anointing and right that's this that's the mode that they're talking about and he became a young lion and he learned to catch the prey what did he devour and he devoured men and he knew their desolate palaces Check this out. God, God says, in my Father's house are many rooms. I go to prepare a place, and that's where I'll receive you. All right. That's not when, you, when we die. Okay? Think of God like the host of heavens. Think of an apartment building. Okay? Think of an apartment building <clears throat> like a lot of rooms. You've got the dungeon. And I'm saying calling it a dungeon, not a basement, because I want you to get the idea that some people are in the dungeon. They're in the depths, the, the bowels of existence. <clears throat> Yet everything exists inside God, doesn't it? All life exists inside God, right? God's not over here, and there's no God here. Everything, David said, no matter how low I go, there you are. No matter how high I go, everything exists inside God. There's just different rooms, dwelling places. Think of it like streets of faith, right? The New Jerusalem, isn't it a cube? It's... It's as much this way as it is this way, right? Well, everybody's not walking around here. In the New Jerusalem, people are walking at different levels of faith. And this one can manifest all these miracles, and this one can't yet. Why? He hasn't gotten those revelations. He hasn't climbed up enough levels of authority, whatever. All right? Um, um, basically, Jesus is in the penthouse, and we're trying to go up floor at a time. And there's always some kind of condemnation or revelation that won't let us go to the next floor. So we battle with it. We're on the fifth floor. We're battling with the king of the sixth floor until we can get up to the sixth floor. Now, somebody comes along, and they've got 15 floors under their belt, and you come for prayer, and they pray, boom, you're cleared, and in an instant, you're on the 15th floor. Well, if you go 15 floors up, doesn't your vision improve? Whoa! Your revelation, your knowledge of the territory, of the whole understanding of the kingdom, all right? Problem is, you don't actually know how to fly, fight floor 6 through 15, and so you're not able to hold that real long. You might walk in that. Haven't you ever done that in a meeting, and you're walking in this revelation, but then within three or four days, you're back to the floor you usually walk at, or the, rev, or the room you're usually in. But the fact that you saw a clearer room, what does it do? It motivates you to fight to the next level. That's why we need that. That's why we need coaches. That's why we need people to dare to motivate us to the next level. But you ultimately in Jesus will have to take it and you'll have to hold it. Okay? And those are the kings you wrestled. Jacob wrestled with that king. Bam, when he got it, he had authority at that level. All right. Jesus basically prepared a penthouse. We're trying to access the penthouse. All right. Um, another way that the Bible talks about it is... Uh, Gideon hiding in the wine vat. And I'm sorry if you guys have heard this, but I'm just trying to get Gideon hiding in the wine vat. Basically, God comes along and says, yo, mighty man of valor. And Gideon's like, you must be talking to the guy in the next wine vat. And he's like, no. He's like, mighty man of valor. Gideon proceeds to explain to God the room he lives in. Are you ready? In his mind, the way his self-perception, he says, I remember my mom told me I'm never going to amount to nothing. My dad kicked me out when I was 14, okay? You know, my teacher told me I'm a loser. My girlfriend said, I'm a, you know, I know who I am. 
<laughs> mighty man of valor, you got the wrong guy. God said, if you do not believe, you will not be established. Gideon is faced with a choice. You know what choice that is? Get out of his low self-esteem room of thinking, thinking, or another way to say it is Gideon had an opportunity to lose his life. When you keep telling people all of who you are and you carry all your memories and baggage from the past, you haven't lost your life. God said, you're a mighty man of valor. All you're required to do is believe it. God said, I'm going to use you significantly across the nation in the hours and in the days ahead. Does that make sense? Your choice is to believe it. Or how could God use me? You know, I'm not that. No, he's going to use somebody else. He's going to use Don Paul. He's going to use somebody else. That's just you not allowing God to use you. God can't use you until you start to agree with him. So when you have your own opinion of yourself and God has an opinion of you and you and your opinion takes precedence, who's God for you? Jesus. No. Your opinion is God. So God has to reason with you to get you to drop your opinion of yourself so you can see yourself the way he does. Now, he didn't say that you don't have the flesh. He didn't say that there's not some training to do. But he had to focus you on a vision or a mark or a goal. My people perish for lack of vision. He has to focus you on a vision or a goal so that you'll just keep walking and press into the mark of that goal, press into the mark of the high call, in spite of how many times you fall down on the way there. And he doesn't want you looking at that. He says, okay, fine, let it go. Let it, okay, fine, I don't care what you just did, Timmy, let it go. Stay focused. We're not focused on what you did. We're not counting up, well, you, one more sin and you're out. One more strike and you're out, buddy. We're not doing that. So Gideon has opportunity. So that's another type when it says lose your life. Okay? How often do husbands and wives remind each other of who they are, but not according to what God says they are? And we hear that taught in the soulish, off the soulish pulpit. Yeah, about the time I feel I'm really something in God, my wife reminds me of who I am, and then the whole congregation goes, <laughs> and guess what? There's no spirit edification. Because that's not funny. The Bible said, and these are those that were not defiled by women. We never hear that scripture. Does that mean women are of inferior species? No. Well, what's it in the Bible for? Uh, does it mean that they didn't have sex with women and sex is bad? Uh, no. I think when you have a union with somebody, you let somebody close to you, and if both people are not discerning, they can be used to the devil to tear down what God is building up. And what's the Bible say? It's better to be with a, 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 a house with nothing, herbs and love, than in a large house with a contentious woman because the demon in her is hell-bent on making sure you don't, and it could be vice versa, but I'm, I'm, and I'm not picking on women. That's not at all what I'm trying to say, and I'm not trying to make women feel bad. I'm, but I'm saying there's certain scriptures that are in there that we never look at. What is it talking about? God spends a lot of time trying to get you to see how significant you are. And I don't, I have to be careful that I don't feed in to your low self-esteem because we're all human. So, therefore, I ask you guys to always look at the other people around you as God sees them so you can sow into that. I will tell you, a, a problem that I have is when I see a spirit of religion veiling itself through the church's cloak of humility and then the judgment of how humble I am and yet it, they're totally under a spirit of religion. Does that make sense? Um, that's not the Spirit of God. That, and that's not... <laughs> okay? Uh, but it's all over the place. And people will train you, rather than revelations... I'm try Hopefully I'm giving you guys revelations to help you see. Um, people will train you how to act humble. And if you get... Haven't you ever seen somebody in the middle of a spiritual battle? Yeah! Yeah! Okay, you're not ready for ministry. What are you talking about? I'm taking down the witchcraft over Fox. Haven't you seen anybody in the throngs of a real battle? They're not cute. You're cute when you go to the officers club, but all we do is try and raise up officers with no battle. Does that make sense? That, that's not it. Anyway, let's stay off of that. Um, 
So think of the dwelling place in your mind as the room that you live in or the way you see your life. You can't become what you can't see. If you take one of the guys on the street and you put him in several million dollar home with money in the bank in a very short time, if he doesn't kill himself with the drugs because he has access to too many now, what he will, he will create for himself the very world he's already in. Therefore, whatever the dream is that you have, you have to hold on to the dream. Don't let the dream thieves come. Don't let the, you have to hold the dream and not quit. Um, you have to see it first. You have to see it first. You have to see it first. You have to be there in the room that you live in before you can be there. And that's not like... I don't believe that is to pull in, well, I've decided that that person's my mate, so now we're going to try and creatively visualize their will wrapped around what I want. No, that A, that's not motivated by the Spirit of God, that's motivated by your soul. And the key here is to watch what God, because when God motivates it, there's a very clean spirit. It's healthy, it brings life, and abundantly, you'll find out that the person that you thought you had to have would have been total hell, it wouldn't have been right. Does that make sense? That's usually why the devil gets that caught up and gets us pushing that witchcraft. So stop it, <clears throat> if anybody's doing that. Um, I believe what I'm talking about is for your own life. For your own life. Because then God will add blessings to you. And your spouse should be a perk or a blessing. It should be something that's added because of what, where you and God are going. Does that make sense? If you're not on your destiny with God, then you're not even in the right path anyway. Okay? Um, another little fun one to do is like this. Imagine yourself on the boat, okay, with, uh, with, uh, with the, 12, the 12 pastors on the boat. There were 12 pastors on a boat. One fell out and who was left? No. Okay. There were 12 pastors on a boat. And here comes Jesus walking on the water. 12 ministers. Those were the ministers. Those were the leaders of the day. <clears throat> Peter looked at Jesus. And it's kind of like look in Jesus' eyes like Peter did and ask Jesus, where do you live? What room are you in? If I lived in your mind and I looked out the windows that you look out of, it's normal to be walking on water. I don't think you're worried about taxes. Your frame of reference, what reality, you've entered into a different dwelling place, a different habitation, a different room. And that's why I call that habitation shifting. I've got to get in, I, I want to get into the habitation, the mansion, the room that Jesus prepared for me. I want to see myself, I want to be in the mind of Christ. We hear it said all over the place. Beulah lamb, beulah lamb, by and by, when I die, I get my mansion in the sky. Okay, enough of the poppycock in the sky. Yes, I don't know what's in that dimension. It could be beautiful. You could probably have anything you wanted. But the reality of what Jesus was doing was he was entering into a place where all things were possible. Possible, and he's trying to enter us into that same dwelling place. Is that making sense? All right. So with that in mind, you'll find that when you read this, and he went up and down among the lions, and he became a young lion and learned to catch the prey and devoured men. And he knew their desolate palaces. Time magazine had it more correct than the Beulah land by and by when I die religious pie. And that is when Time Magazine said the gaudy mansions of Clinton's mind. On the one hand, he sees himself savior of the world. On the other hand, he sees himself not perjuring in court. On the other hand, he sees that a cigar was not sex. Or you know what I'm saying? In other words, he's almost in the gaudy mansion. What it's pointing out here, what the prophet is identifying, is the self-perceptions that men dwell in. Jesus said, you're whitewashed sepulchers. You think I don't know what, where you're at in your head and your heart? I go to prepare a place. I want, and then it says, blessed are they that are pure at heart, for they see God. He's trying to help us understand how to access 
this place. Does that bear witness with everybody? Okay. So, so the young one comes along and, and, and recognizes the, the, the gaudy mansions, the desolate palaces, and he laid waste their cities. What would that be? That would be all the things that their pontifications built for them. How about they are so pumped up in their religious pride, veiled in humility, they can't see it, so God takes in a little loudmouth prophet to get right in their face and to bust their religion all over the place. Wow, that's what he did with Jesus, isn't it? That is love. He knew their desolate palaces. Okay? Uh, and the land was desolate by the fullness thereof and the noise of his roaring. Remember when that whole thing with people roaring and they were saying, that's not God, that's not in the Bible, that's not scriptural. Well, you'll find if you look at the word roaring, it's all through the Bible. Anyway, the young lions, rah! Anyway. Then the nations set against him on every side from the, every province and spread their net over him and he was taken into their pit and they brought him inward in chains and they brought him to the king of Babylon. What does Babylon mean? Confusion. Brought him to the king of confusion. Oh, I'm prideful. Oh, I don't love God. Oh, that was the devil using me. Oh, I need to submit. Oh, I need to be crushed again. Oh, does that make sense? Is that interesting? And pretty soon we're so confused, we don't know what's God, what's not God, and we learn to prophesy by and pray and act and are controlled by religious spirit, and we're captured in a pit. Okay? And they brought him inward in chains, and they brought him to the king of Babylon. They brought him into holds that his voice should no longer be heard upon the mountains of Israel. Isn't that, isn't that sad? Now, why does the devil cut the head off the prophet? To stop his voice. What is the modern day version of cutting the head off a prophet or stopping his voice? discredit his ministry isn't that interesting because if the revelations go out others will enter in and if they enter in then the devil loses control a spirit of religion is eventually going to lose its control over the church the key is to not get captured under it isn't that is that good um, those people that came in last time, that was, a, that was a heavy spirit. And they're deceived by that spirit. But we felt, that's not the God that I know. That's not the one. And yet people get captured into that all, all the time. The Bible says you'll know what spirit a man is of by the fruit it produces. <laughs> that... I, I trust what Jesus is doing and I, I, the Holy Spirit. You know what I'm saying? That fruit. Um, I remember listening to a Christian brother one time, and man, he started quoting. He was he was quoting. He started talking, and as he talked and quoted scriptures, this like demonic bleh just started to come over me. I had to shut his mouth, and he was quoting scriptures. I don't care. I don't care. And I finally said, "Hold on. I don't. I don't. I don't need to listen to this." I, I said, um, "I don't." need what you have you need what I have therefore you need to be quiet and listen to me and I will explain the room that I live in and the way that I see things and I said we can identify what you're seeing incorrectly and why you're manifesting your own hell but quite honestly I don't care to stand here and do this I can't help you by listening to it sometimes when people are really broken you have to listen to them a little because they, their healing is just being able to talk but you'll also find that a spirit will try to burden you and bog you down. And at one point, it's time for them to sh and listen because they need sometimes a revelation that you have. Does that make sense? Um, all right, was this good? Good. Any other questions? Uh, as opposed to the real thing, it's no one getting spiritually discerned or, I don't know. The question is, the, um, what is the difference between real humility and false humility? Um, 
Let me do it to you this way, or uh, explain it this way. When we're in the world before we come to God, our mind tries to run things. We try to decide what's good, what's not. Our brain, our, and it's not really our brain, but there's a son of perdition, if you will. There's a spirit that sits in our mind that shows itself that it's God. And it exalts itself above all that's called God. You'll find a lot of people, um, their God is the God in their mind. Okay? And that's, it's an actual spirit. Okay? Or, I don't know how to I really... I don't know how to identify it in words, and it's a part when you're on when you do long fasting, you'll be more aware when it comes back in control and not. And a lot of the things that I went through where God started showing me this thing. But basically, what happens is we're in the world doing our own thing, our life gets all screwed up, we come to God and we're very humbled, we're broken. We start and we're under we sit underneath everybody. And then we believe that everybody knows more than we do. Watching Profit.tv. Please join us next time as we continue to bring you cutting edge spiritual technology. If you want to have your spiritual weapons sharpened, be sure to tune in to the next episode of Profit.tv. If you'd like more information, call 818 994 4007. 818 994 4007 been listening to profit.tv you can join us live right now on the world wide web at profit.tv again www.profit.tv is where we sharpen your spiritual weapons using the latest in spiritual technology this is Seamus from Dublin and you've been listening to profit.tv please join us next time as we continue to bring you the latest in cutting edge spiritual technology